What's good everyone, it's Triple Nazi with another video for the channel. Welcome back to DMV Sports Zone. And it's Nazi here coming off the 20-9 Week 11 win for the Washington football team against the Cincinnati Bengals. And, you know, as you guys can probably tell, I'm back home, back to where it all started on the channel. So, great to be here, great to come here, come home with a W, first week back. Um, first and foremost, let me just get this started by saying that, you know, we're still bad. <laughs> we're still bad. Let's let's pump the brakes. Um, I know a lot of people probably don't think we're good, and even us fans, we're realistic at this point. We're 3-7, and seven, right? We're not going to get on our high horses and just think we're on top of the world or something like that. I understand that, but um, this team didn't play great today, you know? 20-9, to nine, it should have been more of a blowout, especially after someone who I'll mention later went down with an injury, but a win is a win, right? And now we're... We have a very pivotal game on Thanksgiving against the Dallas Cowboys. It's weird, right? We're talking about the division lead. We're talking about playoffs right now for a 3-17, and but that's how the NFC East has uh, played itself out in this wacky, wacky 2020. First and foremost, I want to get through some some notes. Uh, so, you know, we got a punt <laughs> on our first drive once again, and, you know, it it's crazy. We just never score on our first drive. That's just been the theme, the common theme throughout the year, and it really has to be solved in order for us to win against some some really good teams that we have down the road. I know we have the Cowboys next, who isn't a really good team, but we have the Seahawks, we have the Steelers, the 49ers even, if they get maybe a little bit healthy. The Eagles, Week 17, who aren't looking too hot right now, but are still technically leading the division. So we need to get that solved. Um, also, we're not very good against tight ends. That sort of showed itself out today again with uh, Drew Sample, out of all people, having an okay game. Maybe not statistically, but he he had some spurts throughout the game where uh, he gave you some wow plays. Giovanni Bernard was actually pretty good towards the beginning of the game before a certain somebody went down with an injury. But we did a pretty good job of containing the run throughout the game, in my opinion. Pretty good job of containing the pass as well. Um, Ronald Darby... Guys, Ronald Darby is arguably the reason why we won today, man. He was making pass defense after pass defense. It was insane. He almost had a pick once. Like, he just had an absolutely phenomenal game and really has been having a great season, an underrated season, right? Because we all know Kendall Fuller has been having a great season as well and really racked up the, the picks right after coming off that injury. But Ronald Darby, slowly but surely, has been having a really good season and you know, it's great to see, right, the hometown kid coming back and really balling out, right? He had a couple down years in, in Philly after that really good Super Bowl winning year. But, you know, it's great. You know, he's been healthy. Hopefully he stays healthy, fingers crossed. But great great signing in the offseason and maybe could be our cornerback, too, for a long time. If we re-sign him this offseason, we have the money. So why not, man? Hometown kid playing out, which is always great to see. Tyler Board for the Bengals, man. He was making a lot of catches early on in the game. And we need to do a really good job, a better job of containing slot receivers because we haven't done that so far. I know Jimmy Moreland has been giving us solid, solid plays, you know, every now and then. But we need more consistency out of that slot cornerback. And I know Kendall Fuller would be a great play at the slot cornerback. But he's too good on the outside to really um, move him to the slot where, where he played, you know, in his first stint in D.C. But speaking of Kendall Fuller, he had a pretty good game as well. The entire secondary had a pretty good game, actually. Minus Troy Apke, who... Um, should have picked that ball early in the game, but uh, yeah, they had a pretty good game overall. Kendall Fuller did give up that touchdown, but that was more so just Joe Burrow having great ball placement to AJ Green and AJ Green making a great catch and ending up with a touchdown, right? The first the first one since 2018, which is what we do here in Washington, right? Just give up touchdowns to guys who haven't gotten touchdowns for years. That's what it seems like. Um, but yeah, we, we I mean, our defense was actually not that bad. I mean, it helps when a certain somebody went down with an injury, a really gruesome injury. And speaking of, I'll just get to it right now. Gerald Burrow, man, he was, he was balling out in the beginning part of the game. I know the points weren't all there, but he was just throwing the ball all over the place and our defense really couldn't contain him. And unfortunately, he went down with a really serious looking leg injury. They didn't even show the replay. It shows you how serious it was on TV, but... You know, he did have a tweet I just saw where he said, you know, he'll, he'll be back next year. So, I mean, again, really gruesome injury. You hate to see it. I 
hate to see young quarterbacks, man, with so much potential just go down with major injuries. I don't care what team they play for. I know there's some some fans out there who, you know, they like it when the opposing quarterback goes down because that helps their team. I'm just not of that mindset. We don't do that on this channel, guys. I I uh, really felt bad for Joe Burrow because he has a lot of talent, man. And he's been wowing this year. And I think he will be a really good quarterback in Cincy for a long time to come. And just sucks to see him go down. But Ryan Finley was his replacement. And Ryan Finley was absolutely trash. <laughs> just got to say it how it is, right? Did not have a good game. Had a couple of first downs, nice first down passes, but did not have a good game. And the Bengals offense really suffered as a whole after uh, J uh, Joe Burrow went down. And our defense really stepped up too. Our Jack Del Rio, right, the defensive coordinator, actually started to, to dial up some more blitzes. And we got some more sacks towards the end of the game. We got Tim Settle, the Hokie, right, the guy who I've been on high on since the very beginning of his channel. He had a sack today once again. I believe he has four sacks now. He's only two sacks away from from the leading sack getter which is i think montez sweat right now with six sacks montez sweat had a sack today ryan kerrigan also had a sack the uh hb kerrigan right um the guy who i've had his jersey pretty much he was the only one i had had for a jersey in terms of uh, the washington football team for a long time until i got a uh, terry mclaurin jersey this offseason but yeah defense was playing pretty well second half don't really put too much stock into it because it was against the Cincy offense that did not have Joe Burrow. And it was with Ryan Finley, who in the, even in the past through spot starts and stuff hasn't been really good. So again, don't put too, too much stock in it. What I do put a lot of stock in, though, is Terry McLaurin being a baller once again, making sick catch after sick catch. He really was the one that carried the offense in the first half because of that long 42-yard catch, I believe, that was absolutely absurd. And Man, I said this on a tweet. Make sure you guys follow at the MV Sports on Twitter. We're blessed to have Terry McLaurin, man. That was a home run of a pick. Home run of a third round pick. And man, he, he's such a baller, man. I believe he's, what, second or third now in receiving yards in the entire NFL at this point, man. It, it's, it's getting absurd. And he's a superstar, man. I believe, I really believe he's going to be up there with the Michael Thomas, Julio Jones, Tyreek Hill, Maybe by the end of next season. I really believe that. Um, I know the stats show and a lot of people are going to bash me and say, what do you mean? He's already up there. Like, he has better stats than all of them right now. I understand that. But, you know, as you guys know, I'm not all into stats all the time. I use the eyeball test really well. And uh, he, he will get he will get there very, very in very short order, in my opinion. But and speaking of third round picks that have been home run picks, Antonio Gibson, the guy who, again, much like Tim Settle, I've been a high on since the very beginning, since right after we drafted him. He's been balling out. Man, he's getting touchdowns every single week. I believe he had three touchdowns at one point um, within four quarters. So he's been balling out, guys. Uh, he was really close to having his first 100-yard rushing game, game today. He did have 100 yards uh, at one point, but then, you know, with some some penalties and some uh, yardage being taken back by being caught up in the backfield, ultimately ended up with 94 yards. But he was balling. Um, Chase Young had a really good fumble towards the beginning of the game before Joe Burrow was out with that injury and really stopped the Bengals on fourth down, right? The Bengals could have easily scored there. Joe Burrow ran it, tried to get the touchdown, but Chase Young got that fumble. It was a weird play afterwards because the refs called it a, um, I believe they called it a safety because we caught it in the end zone, then we moved forward, and then we fumbled it. I believe it was Cameron Crow who got it, right? Who got it. And the ball ended up back in the end zone. And then they called it a safety on us. And we ultimately um, accepted the penalty there. But either way, at the very end, it, it was a touchback <laughs> after so much confusion, even on my part. And it was a touchback. Great play. Chase Young really stepping up today after uh, that that disappointing performance last week, especially what happened at the end of the game that I'm still mad about um, because the Lions were absolutely trash today. And just getting a win against them would have been really good for division odds. But it is what it is. Chase Young also had a near interception, which is great to see. Troy Apke as well. Um, but yeah, Logan Thomas, I I've seen enough. He he's he's a tight end too, at best. Like you, you guys can't convince me otherwise. Washington can't convince me otherwise. He's a tight end too, at best. I hate to say he's a hokey. He's Corey's guy, right from on the warpath. Corey, shout out to you because you uh, had a birthday yesterday, and uh, everybody go make sure to wish him a happy belated birthday if you haven't already. But no, uh, Logan Thomas, <laughs> we just, no, no, it, it's, it's a wrap. He's not our tight end one. 
it's another position that we have to fill this offseason in the draft, if not free agency. But yeah, offense was pretty anemic throughout the game outside of Antonio Gibson, Terry McLaurin, Alex Smith. As I've been saying for weeks, is not it at the quarterback position. He's only going to be our starter next year if we end up drafting a young quarterback. Hopefully a Zach Wilson, who you guys know I'm high on if you've been checking out the Twitter. He's, he's balling, man. He's balling. I know against weaker opponents, but he's balling. Alex Smith will probably be that bridge gap type of quarterback for us next year if he ends up still being on the roster, right, and not being cut in the offseason as a uh, cap casualty. But, no, he, he was okay. He was okay. Today was a typical Alex Smith game that you saw in 2018, right? The typical game where we ended up winning, but Alex Smith was just the game manager. Did have that pick, though, which is not what we saw in 2018 too much, but was pretty solid, and um, hats off to him for, for being solid, especially towards the end of the game and not making critical turnovers towards the end of the game, right, as we've seen, I believe, in the last couple of weeks. So um, kudos to him, but... Yeah, overall solid performance. McKissick wasn't getting involved early in the game, which I know hurt a lot of fantasy owners out there, but he did end up getting more involved towards the, towards the end of the game where, uh, you know, the, the score, the game was sort of out of reach, not score wise, but because of the fact that the Bengals were trying out Ryan Finley as a quarterback. But, um, so something I also want to mention, Peyton Barber, we talked about this, uh, Pedro and I on the last live stream. I've been saying this since literally week one. Why are we giving Peyton Barber snaps? Why are we giving him snaps? Every single time Antonio Gibson or J.D. McKissick has a really good drive. The next drive, Payne Barber starts off the drive and he gets you two or three yards on the first down. And then we're backed up, second and nine, second and eight. And then we're backed up even further. And then it's a fourth down, I- inevitably. That- that's usually how it works, right? And it's really getting exhausting as to how much they're charting out Payne Barber. Payne Barber is only supposed to be a short goal line sort of back or maybe on a third and two you trot him out there try to get the tough yards and stuff but we're trotting him out there on first and ten <laughs> second and five like that should not be happening we had too much talent in Antonio Gibson even JD McKissick where that should not be happening and I've been saying that for weeks Scott Turner or Randy Jordan whoever is the one who who's putting the running backs out there get that solved please because Peyton Barber is just not it man he's a solid guy he's a solid character guy and I, you know it's cool to have him Again, pretty solid goal line back, and there were times today where he had some really good runs. Uh, even the broadcasters mentioned that he it felt like he was sort of running out of a cannon, right? Getting shot out of a cannon because he had some really good runs today. I'll admit that, but he's getting way too many carries, in my opinion. I know he's not getting too many carries in general, but for my liking, Antonio Gibson, Jamie McKissick should be commanding most of, if not all, of the uh, the reps out of the backfield. Um, but. Yeah, please get that fixed. Also, another thing I want to mention that wasn't mentioned on Twitter or even on the broadcast, Morgan Moses played a very solid game at left tackle today. I know he's been our right tackle for many years now. It feels like forever, right? He's he's one of our longest tenured Washington football slash Redskins players at this point. And he played solid today at left tackle. I don't even think he gave up any sacks or maybe even any pressures. I didn't hear his name too much in terms of penalties or anything. He really went back to his UVA days and played at left tackle for the first time since college, really, and was solid, man. It was solid, and I'm, I'm, it's great to see that. On the other side, David Sharp was not good. He gave up some pressures. There were some miscommunications that almost led to sacks, if not Alex Smith. If Alex Smith didn't, you know, throw the ball really uh, quickly and stuff, but no, on the left side, it was pretty solid. Brandon Sheriff had a solid game. I mean, the offensive line, minus David Sharp, in my opinion, actually had a pretty solid game. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopkins, right? Dustin Hopkins. Mr. Inconsistent himself, someone who I haven't been high on since the miss in, in London, right? Against the Bengals, actually. I believe it was four years ago now, but he's super in- inconsistent. He'll make you a really long 50-yarder, <laughs> and then the next try he'll miss on a 38-yarder. That seems pretty easy, right? And I still don't think he's the kicker for us for the long for the long term. I really think we need to get someone this offseason, if not even earlier than that. Um, even Randy Bullock, though, I get it. He also was missing kicks he doesn't usually miss. So both of the kickers didn't have great games, but are on a, are on on our end. Dustin Hopkins hasn't been consistent for a long time, so this wasn't the first sort of game where we saw that. So again, I don't think he's a long term guy and. 
should definitely try to fix that situation ASAP. But yeah, Trust Way had a day, was making extraordinary punts every every single play, really, every single chance he got, and has been doing that for the last several years. He should he definitely deserves to be in the Pro Bowl, um, as does Terry McLaurin as well, at least. But um yeah, Way having a great game. But yeah, defense really sealed the deal at the end of the game. Again, don't put too much stock into it because we were playing against Ryan Finley and the Cincinnati Bengals. And we were not generating pressure whatsoever, really, for most of the first half. I know Joe Burrow was making a lot of quick passes, which is pretty much a big reason why there was no pressure. But at the same time, man, when you put all that draft capital, all that res- all those resources, all that time, money, and effort into that defensive line, you want to see them, you know, get some more sacks or maybe get some more tackles for losses. And we saw that with Chase Young, right? Um, but... I think a lot of that has to do with the linebackers too because as I've been saying for so long this channel it feels like the linebackers are just not it man outside of maybe Cole Holcomb I don't like our linebackers and that's been the case for the last three or four years really and that's another position that we need to get fixed Chris Cooley we mentioned this earlier on the channel he even said we're one linebacker away from being a very solid defense right this was before Landon Collins got injured of course but and I can see that, man. If we get a Michael Parsons in the draft, whoo, whoo, wow, that that would be a really good defense. But um, it is what it is. Fabian Moreau had a pick towards the end of the game. Like to see that hasn't gotten too much rep, too many reps. But as someone mentioned on Twitter, <laughs> he's either getting burnt on or he's getting picks. <laughs> it's there's no in between for him. So it was great to see a pick from Fabian Moreau. But on to I would say next Sunday, but really on to Thursday, right? Because we're playing on Thanksgiving against the Dallas Cowboys, the hated rival. And don't look now, but it's actually a pretty big game. It really is. You know, if we win on Thursday, we're actually, we actually have the division lead at least for like two or three days, right? Before the Sunday games, but pivotal game. So make sure you guys gobble up that turkey, the mashed potatoes, the macaroni and cheese, and uh, watch some good football, hopefully. And watch a Washington win, right? As we like to see. But yeah, score 29 today. Good, solid win. Again, don't put too much stock into it. Because one, it was not against a really good team. Two, it was against a team that for one half did not have Joe Burrow because of that major injury. So, or at least what it looks like, right? To be a major injury. Um, But yeah, a win is a win. And on to Thursday, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to... Subscribe to the channel, like this video, comment, do all those sort of good things. Thank you guys, as always, for the support. I really appreciate it. I see all all the support on the live streams, all the support on the fantasy videos. Appreciate it. And yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, this this channel continues to grow as this team continues to grow. That that was literally my thought back in April, right? On top of, you know, giving you guys content during this very tough time, but I, I really want to see, you know, this channel start where this team has been really bad and then end up where this team ultimately becomes really good. That That's the goal. But thank you guys again so much for watching. And uh, we'll see. Hopefully I make a reaction video to Thursday's game. Might not make it on Thanksgiving, guys, because it is Thanksgiving. Everyone enjoy time with their family and stuff. But maybe might do a quick reaction on Friday or Give you guys some sort of content towards the end of the week. We'll see. We'll see about that. I'll make sure to post it on Twitter too and Instagram as well. So thank you guys again so much for watching and uh, peace.